Hi, I'm Andrew from Knapsack Games, and this is how to play Apotheca, the secret potion society. In Apotheca, you are black market apothecaries trying to make these matches of potions. You have to make three matches of the potions to win, and a match is three potions of the same color in a row on the board, uh, in a row or a column, uh, but never diagonally. So to make these different matches, you're going to be doing different actions on your turn, like using your apothecary powers to move the potions around in different ways. You're also going to be looking at the secret potions that you know about, but your opponents don't know about, and you can put these anywhere on the board. And then you're also going to be revealing these secret potions to get gems, and use the gems to hire more apothecaries, get more powers, make more matches, and eventually win the game. So now I'm going to set up the game and go through uh, in more detail the different game actions. You always take two different actions and there are four actions in all. The first one that you can do is reveal one of these face down potions to be face up and take a gem that matches its color and you'll use these later. The second thing that you can do is the restock action and this means to take face down potions, look at them, and place them anywhere on the board until there are three face down. If there are already three face down uh, when it comes to you on your turn, you can't use this action. The third action that you can take on your turn is using one of your apothecary powers. I have Cantrip Flip right here, and this lets me swap two adjacent cards. So let me take those and swap them. That would be a use of my power. If you have uh, more than one power during the game, you can actually use two of them as your two different actions, and that's really how uh, a lot of players make matches in the game, because you can get really powerful that way. The fourth action that you can take on your turn is the higher action. And to do this, you're gonna take two gems of the same color, so let's say I had two yellows over here, and I'm gonna turn them in, and I would hire the yellow apothecary, and that's indicated by the yellow gem over here. So I would get Gully Glide, and then I would reveal a new power over here in Apothecary Alley. Another thing that you can do with the higher action is instead of using two gems of the same color, you can actually use a rainbow of gems, turn them in, and you get the top card of the Apothecary deck. So now I'm gonna reset to a starting setup and we're gonna play through a few turns. So to set up a two player game of Apotheca, you're gonna first shuffle up the potion deck and then place three face down, diagonally across here, and then one face up to each of the corners. Then you're gonna shuffle up the Apothecary deck, place three face up here to form Apothecary Alley, and then put a gem by each of them, a different color gem, and that says which uh, color gem you need to hire them. And then, since there's two players, we're gonna deal out two apothecary powers, uh, one for each of us, and then we're also gonna get one of these reference cards. And it says the different actions that you can take on your turn. So now I'm gonna run through a few different turns. So this player is gonna go first over here, and whoever goes first actually only takes one action instead of the usual two, because they're at a little bit of an advantage. So for my first action, I'm going to use the reveal action and I'll go for this potion here, and because it's blue, I'm gonna take a blue gem. Now it goes to this player's turn. And he has the regular two actions, because he's going second. It's probably a good idea for him to use a reveal action as his first one, because that means he gets to put down two potions uh, for his restock action, because there's only one face down on the board right now. So this player would Look at this potion, put it somewhere, let's see, he might put it here to block his opponent's wandering waltz, which lets him move a potion in any direction, so to block a future blue match here. So this player gets to put down another card with his restock action, and he sees that this one is blue, and he's going to put this over here, and the reason he's doing that is because He's got Teleportal. This lets him jump a potion in an L motion. So on his next turn, he could potentially jump this, flip this, and get a match. 
So that was the two actions. He did the reveal and the restock, and now it's back to this player's turn. So just in case this one is blue, he's gonna flip it over. No, it's not. So he's gonna take a red, and for this guy's second action, he's gonna go for a restock as well. So he looks at it, and what would be advantageous for him? Probably to put this over here so that he can possibly make a Wandering Waltz match right here using his power next turn. Now it goes back to this player's turn. And he got to sneak by his little plan with uh, planting the blue potion, so he's gonna go for that. He flips over this blue, collects a blue gem, and then uses his teleportal to jump this. And he takes this match off the board and whenever you make a match, you're actually going to place it on one of your apothecaries, and this means that you've satisfied your apothecary. That means you can't use that apothecary for the rest of the game. So it's very important to keep revealing matches, collecting gems, and using them to hire more apothecaries, because you always need one whenever you're going to get a match. Okay, so now it's back to this player's turn, and he really wants to catch up because he's a match behind. So he's gonna go ahead and flip the potion that he knows is blue, and collect a blue gem, turn in these two blue gems for Owl Swoop over here. And then Apothecary Alley is going to refill with the Wizarding Winds. Very cool power. Anyhow, so now it's back to this player's turn and he really needs a power. So he's gonna go ahead, flip this, he gets red, and, hmm, it's a tough decision in this case. He could either use his three gems over here and do the wild hire, which is get the top card of the Apothecary deck, or he could go for a restock action. And in this case, it's a great restock because there are no face down potions on the board. So he can choose whether, you know, he wants to get ahead with the power or be in control of the board in terms of information. So I think, if I were him, I would go for the restock because I'm still a little bit ahead with my match. So he looks at the first one, it's blue, and um, with placing these down, because he doesn't have a power yet, he's probably gonna, gonna wanna just avoid uh, letting this other player get a match, looking at the different powers that he has and how he can combine them. So with this blue one, you can put it over here, and let's see, another blue, uh-oh not looking too good for this guy. He'll put it over here, again, just avoiding any semblance of possible matches. And then uh, he gets another, he gets a red one. And he'll place it here. And note that whenever I'm placing these potions with the restock action, I always face the arrow on the back of the potion card towards the player that placed it. And this is so you know who put it down. Um, while you can use your powers to move anyone's potions that they put down or anything like that, like there's no ownership of the potions, the arrow lets you know who placed them down so you, they can look at them again if they forget them. Um, so if he forgets that this is red, he could just look at it again because the arrow's facing him. So now it's back to this player. And he's trying to think, what color potion is face down that this guy just placed that he could flip to possibly get a match next turn? So he's gonna go ahead and flip this right here, take a blue gem. And this is great because next turn, he can use his two powers to make a match with this. He could potentially owl swoop over here and wandering waltz this right here, and then that would be a match. But he can't quite do that right now because he only has one action left. Something smart that he could do is use the restock action. And let's see, he gets a red. Um, Let's put that over here, which will also line him up for a red match. The reason that this is smart for him to do is because now there's three face down potions on the board. That means when it gets back to this player's turn, he can't use his restock action, meaning he can't block this player's match that he's lining up over here. So that was his turn. Comes back to this player and he's in a bit of a bind and let's see what happens. He's gonna turn in these for the wild hire, which is the top card over here, and he gets Lucky Leap. Lucky Leap lets you take a potion and hop it two spaces, two or three spaces in any direction. So horizontal, vertical, diagonal. So he's gonna go ahead 
and take this face down potion and leap it over here. And this blocks the owl swoop that this guy was going to do because you can never have two potions in the same space. So that was his two actions. Um, interestingly, it also blocks the red match that this guy was cooking up. So it's back to this player's turn and he knows that his match was just blocked, but he's kind of wondering what these two potions are. Um, if this one's a yellow, he could potentially move it down here with Wondering Waltz and get a match. Uh, or if this one's blue, he could still get a match. Um, so, here's what he's gonna do. He's gonna call this guy's bluff. Flip this over here and bam, it is blue. Gets his blue gem. And then he's gonna use Wondering Waltz to move this up here. Takes the blue match off the board and catches up. Now, because when he has two Apothecary Powers out, he can place this match on either one of them. He likes trusty Wandering Waltz, because he just got him a match, so he's gonna cover up his Owl Swoop, and he's satisfied that Apothecary. So that was going through a few turns of the game. Again, we keep going until one player has three matches. And this was a two-player game. You can also play this three-player or four-player. In three-player, it's still every person for themselves. It's a little more chaotic, a little more fun. In four player, you play as teams and you sit across from your teammate, so it alternates team A, team B, so on and so forth. And you still need three matches to win, but it's collectively as a team. So that's how to play Apotheca, the secret potion society. Thanks for watching.